Make it amazing. Make it amazing. <laughs> if, if you're hearing the sound of my voice, that means you're listening to another episode. This is take three. Another episode of Somewhere in Between. I have an esteemed guest, um, one of my favorite best friend cousins, um, Mr. John Price. How are you? Good, cuz. Oh, how are you doing today? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let me get the church, church announcements out of the way yet again. You know where to find me. Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> YouTube, Keisha Pollard. Um, Miss Always Amazing is inserting herself into the social media atmosphere. She has an Instagram and a Facebook. And I'll tell you that it's interesting trying to um, diversify my content on all of those platforms. But, Mr. Price. Yo, uh, what's up? So, backstory, um, Edmund and I grew up, uh, I knew of his father, I knew of his father, like the esteemed Reverend John Price, um, and so we ended up finding each other working at Nationwide, his um, brother was, was dating at the time and ended up marrying Nicole, um, and I saw a picture of him, of George, on her desk, and I thought, man, those jaws look familiar, so I called my grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, "Yes, baby, that's Reverend. That must be Reverend Price's son." And uh, and from then, it's been history. Edmund started working at some point in sales, and then went to underwriting. And we connected, and we have been um, in separate roles. Like, right. But we have been close. Um, we really took to one another and um, found a connection and a bond that I think is inseparable. Agree. I think so too. I agree. I think it's the most acceptable in this world. Look, I'm not a senior in like seven years and I haven't bought a book. I feel so bad. I was going to say, although when I come to VA, I never see him. So I don't know. <laughs> That's because you run around with your mom and dad and all them going out to eat and all that stuff. Being bested, right? So we'll be able, you have to come pop back to get to hurt, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> I'll you right. Give me. So, Mr. Price is um, Minister of Music. We're, we're going we're gonna to dive all into that, but tell me you have an amazing, gorgeous wife whom you met at the University of Farmville. Where'd you go to college? <laughs> we went to, I went to school at, at that time when we met each other, and she said I was walking around in my, little like I was prof- a professor. It was a Longwood <laughs> I met the pen. I shot. And my pants are hiced up now. And she said they always are hiced up. And she said, she thought, she said, who is that professor? And then I saw her at a basketball game with a dude. And I remember the day I saw her. I Aww. remember, but I ain't done nothing. I remember the first day I was, I was like, hey, look, skinny girl, cute. And Aww. so we hooked up. Stayed on, and now you're like boy five, maybe what six, but 2005 we started dating. I remember the day. It was I remember, not exactly, but I remember when you walked over to my desk in commercial. I was like, hey, I found that tender roll. He wrote, you didn't say that. She didn't listen to R&B music, but <laughs> I know that song. Um, imported. I know that song. Oh, do you? I stand corrected. I'm in Fortin. But yeah, so, yeah, man, I got three kids, yo, out of being married, and I have my first son. Huh? For 13 years, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 13 years, and, um, and, I, and in case you know you got mad, do you remember you got mad because I didn't invite you to the wedding? Yes! <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I I saw him through a breakup and everything. I mean, we walked miles at Nationwide with this breakup. I, I, I didn't even want to. Okay, did, did Diane Banks? I was trying I mean, I think, did, did anybody from Nationwide? Did, did Doris Johnson go? Did I? Was I the only person that didn't go to the wedding? Because I think Doris Johnson came by accident. She wasn't really invited. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. she showed up and everything where food was. So offended. So, I don't know how we made it through, but we did. But I don't think you came to my wedding. You didn't come to my wedding either. I think I asked you to play at my wedding. Let's let's talk about that. I asked you to play at my wedding. What happened? You did not ask me. He was already married. No, 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 no. You were married. Were you married? No. Were you married? No. Were you married? Two thousand five. 
Yeah, you probably did ask me to play. I, I did. Couldn't. Oh, yeah, do air quotes. He couldn't. So I couldn't come to the wedding. He couldn't play at my wedding. So <laughs> that's my but God is good because if I ever get married again, you got me? Are you going to play at my next wedding? I got you. I got okay. you. I'm going to be making that music for that new thing. Oh, I don't know if people know about it. Some new thing you're doing. Yeah, he, he's, he is actually creating. First of all, he uh, massively gave me some music for my book, some of the uh, marketing for my book, and you've probably heard it. Um, it immediately sends you into worship, so shout out to JP Enterprises, JP2 Enterprises. <laughs> but also, he's going to give me some. Yes! He's going he's gonna to make me some. I want some introduction music for my intro and outro music for my podcast. I'm tired of going on YouTube and finding <laughs> Right, you need that, cuzzo. You I need do. your own like identity. Yes, I thank you. Hello. Okay, <laughs> so three beautiful children. I digress. Three beautiful children. J three, first, right? Yeah, John three was the first one, and then Olivia Price. John three is um twelve, going to seventh grade, Aww. and thank you, thank you, know it all and tall. Oh. And I'm just learning a lot of being a parent with him because he's older now. And I learned a lot from you, Keisha. I see it now. <laughs> and then Olivia's the same way. Olivia's 10 now. And I remember when they was little babies crawling around at your house in that matter. Yes. And then Eden was Eden was in the little in the little thing on moving when last wow. time you know. And so Eden is eight years old. He's my sport guy and rapper. Um, Olivia is my orange person. John is, um, John is, you know, he likes the, the, the YouTube and stuff, like kind of the podcast and stuff. He does and stuff like that on YouTube. And he's more of a gadgets guy. But he actually can sing very well if I can get me going and do it. Really? Yeah. Uh-oh. I mean, voice is so, it's smooth. I ain't lying. The legacy continues. Yeah. Huh? The legacy continues. He's he going to break out and sing to a girl. That's what's going to happen. Hey, and then and then Eden can rap. He'll do the chorus, and then Eden do rap. You walk around this necklace. Something about I don't know if because Eden's the baby. I didn't get a lot of time with Eden, but there he has a place in my heart. He could probably call me today and ask me for all of Nicki Minaj music, all of Drake's music, and I would Amazon it to him. <laughs> He's so cute. He is a trip. Well, we out prayerfully, Keisha. On our all honesty, Lord's will we need to get to Texas for real, man. Because I need, I want to hang out with you. Yes, both of the girls graduated. It's like no, Kiara's graduation I'm coming. No, Koya's graduation I'm coming. So maybe after college, Koya college graduation. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Does Eden have a rapper name? Does Eden have a rapper name? I'm curious. What does he call himself? Little baby E. Don't let your screen lock. I was keeping. Screen lock thing off. Yeah, go ahead. Does Eden have a rapper name? Does he has he assumed uh, his rap name? Oh no, he doesn't have a rap name. Jesus. No. I'm sure. Uh, that's. Not have you ever asked? Him? I mean, I, I mean, yeah. He's he's just he's so um. I just, he's still a baby. I feel like I could put him up on my hip. Like he just, <laughs> and I know that I can't. Such a baby. Mm. He's not a baby. He needs a. He's not a baby. He's a grown man. He, he's so smart though. He's very. Smart. <laughs> he's like a grown he, man, but he's not too smart. You can be a grown man, but you got to brush your teeth. You gotta have you brush your teeth. You gotta take a bath, and then put your necklace and stuff on. <laughs> I need. I have to got the gold the gold necklaces on that that's his jam now gold necklaces yes and he has gold and he wants he said he wants silver teeth he wants uh, uh, earring and he wants tattoos already in his life <laughs> at, <years> eight. <laughs> at eight years old at eight years old it's some rappers that he listened to today. I know he listened to Nipsey Hussle he was listening to him before he died okay. and he was listening to some other man yeah, he was listening to all of them, and like I said, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, he loves all of them oh, and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, and I said, no one know what they're talking about. No, just saying words, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes, yes, let's talk to 
Yeah, so I know that um, Siobhan has her master's, right? What what's what's up yes, with her? Yes, Siobhan. Siobhan has in education. Yes, with a concentration in um, supervision. She just took on a new role at a private school, a uh, private school in Richmond, Virginia. At, it's Crystal Ray. It's a private Catholic school. Um, so wow, awesome. she she started that. She said she really likes that position. So um, she's looking forward to advancing in the private school sector. She said she said this, the public school sector had a whole lot going on. So she moved over to non non for profit. Good for her. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, you recently? Not a huh? You recently? Did you recently graduate with divinity theology? What? What's your What's your initials behind your name? <laughs> I am the first prelate of Bishop of the Apostolic Now. Um, I got my master's. Let me tell you, I got my uh, master's of worship studies with a concentration in leadership, and um. 2000, I completed the course in 2016, early 2016. That also included, I had got my Master's of Religion and Theology as well. So, and now I am doing, uh, you know, looking and researching for my doctorate of ministry now. But then, podcast. Um, so you were saying, what What are your credentials? What What's your initials? What are your studies? Oh, my initials are Masters of Arts in Worship Studies with a concentration in Leadership, um, which that all rolls into theology and religion. And I got that from Liberty University. Um, prior to that, I had my, um, I have my associate's degree in music theory. I'm a musician, self-taught musician. Oh. And I have my business administration degree from Longwood University, Elwood. Bon Bill. Bon Bill, baby. <laughs> so you said yes. self-taught. I did not know that. You taught yourself? Yes, you knew that, cousin. No, uh, no, love, I did not I know. Started, girl, this is what happened. I started playing the keyboard just in the living room and I was baby. Mama told me, Mama was used to say, I better, you better get off that keyboard because your daddy gonna get you. And so I learned this later, they told me. And daddy was like, no, let him keep banging on the keyboard because eventually he gonna start playing. Before that, I used to sing on the choir. I always like love music, like love being around. Now I look back at my life and so I was like, just kept banging on the piano. Then everybody, then like one day I played at church and everybody laughed at me. Oh. And so daddy told me to keep playing. And mama told me to keep playing. And so I did. And now I can play like, I can play like really. I mean, if I needed to play something, I could play it. And I know that ain't number the Lord. Cause like I, I don't have great rhythm. I don't have, I can't, I don't have great musical ear. Um, like as far as being able to sing well, um, you know, sometimes my, and I know my tempo and rhythm is not that great as well. My, not, not tempo and rhythm, but coordination. And so that's why I know it's the Lord, it's a gift from God, because I, I and then, you know, the, the crisis, we win our medals, so. Um, <laughs> Shame. Shame. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I'm definitely Meadows and Miller. I don't got none of that price stuff, but I try. I try. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Yes. You know, so I, I promise you, I, I was not aware, and I'm sure um, people whom, um, I, I didn't know, honestly. I did not know that you, I assumed that, you know, your dad had been trained, and so, man, that, I mean, eat, I have a whole new respect for you. I think that is Great amazing. Day. Don't grad day. Yes, I mean, so I mean, but I, I mean to, but you you um, hold yourself, or you can not that it's competition, but you you are in the likes of people that are that have trained and went to school and can read. No, I mean you, you can read music. Right. Yes, I can read music. Yes. <laughs> I wasn't, and and you can syncopate. Isn't that a thing? Is that a term? 
I was on the track the other day and I thought about syncopation. What is that? What is what does a syncopate mean? It's like it's a type of rhythm. So it's like a, like something you do on your on the drum. So like it's it's like a it's some type when you syncopate it with like the drums and the guitar rhythm, the rhythm from a guitar, like a mm-hmm. like on Brad Hammer or something, and the drum is kind of <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's syncopated. But yeah, so it's a blessed you're right. So yes. I don't want this conversation. So it's like crazy because it's like the Lord has been all like so orchestrated and like I feel like you know, he just been orchestrating and everything. And then now when I look back on things and and then I can see my children, even though I'm not really pushing them. I can just see it already in them, and I just pray whatever God does for them. I'm, I'm not a person that's trying to make them do what do, because I wasn't like that. So if, if it happens, it happens, and it'll be God's gifting to them, and just, you know, I don't want to be like, man, you better come play, but they always come to rehearsal. So I know if one time or another, one of them going to just, like, flourish. Somebody is. But, yeah, so let's talk. I th- well, I'm still in awe. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move beyond my... I don't know. I, I've been using the word impressive lately, and I just want you to know I think that is beyond impressive because um, I've seen the gift and the talent. And I told you, I don't know where, I, I think I came to Hills Creek for a homecoming one time, and um, I don't know, you're in your element. So I think it's dope that yeah. you're able to make your yes. profession, your calling, uh-huh. and your purpose, like all that is one. I think that's that's amazing. Yeah, because you came and you sent me that, t- you told me, you was like, oh, e, you and your Ella, and you remember that time you said something, I was out there and I was sweating, and, and that, yes. that, that thing, and I'm having an arc. Yes, yes. Oh, it's tough, you always know how to encourage, because I'd be like, you know, oh, but like you said, you, not only you, but a lot of people say, they'd be like, you make, like, even now, like, and these people don't really know me here, and they'd be like, you are really operating your gift, so that's just like yes. more confirmation. I'd be like, thank you, Gina. So when when we met, you were working at Nationwide. So when you went to college, did you, did you think that music was going to be your profession? Honestly, no. I can tell you exactly what my what I thought was going to happen. I, you know, and you were from that area as well. I just thought, you know, I would graduate from Long. I graduated from Longwood with a pretty good GPA. I had already got an internship with Nationwide, so and I knew. Um, you know, CF Younger, you know, and uh, Kadam, Patricia, a couple of them people when I did my internship. So I just thought, man, shoot, I'll get a decent job at Nationwide, make close to 50000 buy me, give me five acres of land, down oh, back home. <laughs> yep. Married, married this girl that I was dating, and um, be with her forever. That's what I really thought. Wow. You know? But man, when I tell you, is my life is nothing like I, what I thought it was gonna be. Definitely, is it's, it's nothing like what I thought it was gonna be. So, at what you point know? did you realize that? Because I recall you, you um, went to go be the minister of music at your dad's church at Hills Creek, right? Um, at what point did you think I'm gonna take the leap of faith and do full time ministry? Oh, good, good, good thought. Good question. Um, well, if you're, and as you know, you know, my brother, George, he passed in 2011. Mm-hmm. Prior to him passing, he, like, he sent me something, like an email about auditioning for something. He was like, man, E, e you could do it. You should try to or something. And I was like, man, you could do it. Right, yeah, he was like, you should audition for it. It was something at St. Paul's Church or something. Mm-hmm. And, um, I don't know if you remember back then. And so when I saw it, I was like, yeah, you know, I'll try for it. But, I, but, at the, but George died like the next month. So I didn't try. And so the, um, after that, one of, my, one of my friends, Tiffany Wilkes, I don't know what her last name is now. But she t- she sent me something that was St. Paul. It was like, ain't that kind of a, a coincidence? And so I guess started, I start, I did this thing at St. Paul that was like a, and St. Paul is like a church, like equivalent, it's like a TDJ church in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And so that, that, that opened up my eyes to opportunity in ministry. So when I realized that I was going to do ministry, and when I wanted to do, honestly, when my dad passed, well, first when George passed, I, I was thinking about it. 
but and I was thinking I could do both, juggle both. But then when Dad passed at 14, that's when I just started my masters. And we were like, man, I want to do, I want to do what the Lord has has told. Me. I want to, I want to take a chance in giving it, giving my all to God. Because, like you said, when at Nationwide, although I was working there, I wasn't giving it my all. Just to be real, I hope damn sure ain't none of this. But I, <laughs> I hope they're listening. But you know, I'm just joking. Yeah, I hope they listening, <laughs> Sharon. But. You know, I and Dick Wagline and all them, they were awesome. <laughs> I, I, oh man, and you know, and so um I, it's it's crazy. And so when I, I, I decided, you know, it was time to make a change or whatever. And, and so you, talk to me. So um when did you leave nationwide? In two thousand fifteen. I mean, what was going through your mind? What did your wife think about that? You know, how was this, how was family supporting your desire to walk yeah. away from a nine to five vacation oh. and you know set schedule? Let me be let me be um, national on podcast. So this is how it went down, okay. and it was bad. it was bad when it happened though, because uh, you know I didn't really know how to tell my wife. So I didn't tell him. And I sent an email, and that didn't work out. <laughs> Hold on. What, what yeah. your email said, baby, I'm quitting. What your email say? Is your screen lock? <laughs> I'm assuming your your screen is locked. Okay. Hello? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. So, 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 I, so I didn't hear anything. So what did the email say? The email said, like, um, hello, you know, trying to be nice. <laughs> hey, um, boo. You know that I feel like it's time for me to move on and stuff like that, and I'm going to leave my job and all that stuff. <laughs> and stuff. So it, I mean, that wasn't good at all. I'm going to tell you, and I, and I would, if I could do it again, I would have did it in a different way. Honestly. Okay. I honestly would have done it because you, when you family, like, cause I believe, I do honestly feel like Siobhan would have been cool if I just talked to her. She probably would have, you know, talked to, she would have been like, well, not today, but let's set a plan. I know she, you know, she, she probably, you know, been, I think she, I'm sure she would have been more on board with it and stuff. And so, um, so as we moved on through the process, um, I did that because let me tell you what happened. Okay. I, I was under the inclination or thought I thought that before um, I, I, you know I'm here in Richmond anyway but I thought I was going to be in a position in Richmond mm-hmm. and I thought I was going to get a job in insurance so that was another thing but that didn't go through so I was like well Lord you must be saying oh I'm ready for ministry because after that happened I was at this church in Richmond working and I was at Hills Creek too I and remember so, that we're driving back and forth. Yeah. Back. Yeah, yeah. And Penny. So, you had Penny, right? Remember Penny? <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, um, the family, you know, it took a while, but I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know she's still in trauma back there, and she still weren't talking about it. But um, I know probably now she looked back on it, she probably understand why I did it. But long story short, um, to me, I was more cuzzo. It wasn't about nothing. I didn't care because I was like, Lord, if I die tomorrow, yes, and I, and I didn't, didn't don't pursue this. Um, I feel like I didn't do what you wanted me to do. Um, and Keisha, I went from making I was making like almost sixty five to making like eighteen thousand dollars. Wow. Yeah. Uh huh. And let me tell you this, how good God is. I didn't, we still was eating ribeye steaks and stuff. And going to every time then getting stuff, whatever we wanted, going on trips. Mm-hmm. And so. What is Jamaica? Um, I remember y'all taking them big, big honey, honeymoon vacations in Carolina, you and your wife. And I'm at Murder Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, e, I love them two bedroom jumping. <laughs> y'all got hey. clipped and, and riding horses in in, the, in Jamaica and carrying on. 
<laughs> if we going, I'm taking her back, y'all. Pray for us. I'm taking her back. And um, I go. um so I'm taking her back um in on Easter. And we're going wow. back. I'm not gonna wait any long because we've been saying we was going back for a long time. And then next thing now, all the kids are almost in high school. I know. I wanna I'm gonna try I'm gonna find me a boo. When is Easter? April, March? I'm gonna find me a boo and we're gonna go with y'all. <laughs> I'm, not I'm, not but yeah, paying, so, I'm not paying for no man so just if anybody's listening I'm not offering to pay for a man to go and I'm saying by March me and my boo gonna be in Jamaica and, with, and, preferably, and you prefer for her but we like for the man to pay for all of us if he can be paid <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> yes call it for I'm down <laughs> but yeah so, so, yeah, so that was a big process, man. Um, but another reason why I also did that, wanted to do that, because I wanted to be more close to my, be there for my children, because when I was doing that, I was doing Hills Creek and Nationwide, I was not even seeing the kids and stuff. Like, I was on seeing them briefly, you know, for a little bit. And then I was able to get closer and be, see, kind of see the things that your mom was dealing with and, um, you know, kind of be there and kind of, and I, and I actually, and I ain't gonna lie, I kind of enjoy, honestly, I do enjoy like the chaosness of the kids, you know, I mean, right. I think it's, um, so, and I, and like leaving today to now, it's like the conversation, it, it, although it's chaos and messy and, you know, we don't know the blueprint of how to talk to kids and stuff and, it's at the end of the day it's just fun because I had the opportunity to talk to them. My parents worked four to five jobs, two and three jobs, and we came home and was kept the most time fend for ourselves. Exactly. You know. All in all while trying to do ministry and then got you going trying to you know, so that's why I just took it at and then also I said I wanted to do this opportunity because I wanted to let my sons and my daughter see that you could do what if it's something that you want to do, you can do it. And you could see me, your dad, or your mother walking in the element of, of their calling. You know, like I feel like Shavon's walking in her calling, and I, I want to really like fully walk into my walk into what God had me to do. So let's keep talking. So, and and sometimes I think um, when the it's a faith walk or a faith choice, we don't want to doubt it. But was there ever a moment? I mean, when you went from making, you know. Um, you know, sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars to eighteen thousand. Was there ever a moment that you thought, "Hold on, God, am I in the wilderness?" Was there ever a moment where you doubted your decision to walk away from corporate America? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm gonna tell you the most rough time was. I don't, and you came to the house then. You no know, time when Shavon had the bad accident. It was a little yes. bit after that. Around that time, you know, because. You know, around like January, the church was like Hills Creek. You know, Dad had been passed, and this was 2015. Shavon had the accident. Mm-hmm. Um, church was all back and forth trying to figure out, and and I just felt like, man, I'm gonna be at a church. You know, like a church. You know, country churches. If they don't get no pastors, they kind of they gonna go down or whatever. And um. I was actually, before I got to this position that I'm in, I was thinking about going back to corporate America because of finances, because of things really won't kind of panning out. And I was like, man, I'm going to just go back to corporate America, find me a job at Frito-Lay, make it (laughs) funny. You you know you're not a manual laborer, right? We know that you're not a manual laborer. <laughs> UPS, so, you know, honestly, and as long as I did it, I would. Uh huh. And uh, because I was the, it got kind of discouraged and stuff, and I was like, well, Lord, I didn't know it was gonna get like this, and um, and it was more, it was more monetary related, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's more, and that that was driving. But um, now let's keep on talking. What else? What's your next question? <laughs> What's the next question? So, okay, you talked about 
doubting. So you moved. I mean, that was another, I never thought, honestly. Um, you know, Appomattox was your jam. That was your hometown. And you were riding yeah. down for Appomattox, right? Your three bedroom, right. two baths. That was your three jam. Three bedroom, two baths, on wood floors all through the house. Nice uh, landscape. Kitchen. Yep. Kitchen. Kitchen, kitchen floor down. I remember that. Yep. Ooh. So, so fast forward, now you have moved, which I, I, I promise, I, first of all, I'm so proud of you and Siobhan for making the move, because you were driving, you took a job and was still driving back and forth, right, for the current job that you have? Yes. Still so how did, back. How did yes, you guys make the decision back. to move? I know it was a big one. Well, yeah, so, yeah, driving back and forth and trying, you know what I'm saying, you know, getting vehicles, right, to drive, do, you know, just do all those things. But, mm-hmm. you know, Appomattox was the bomb, because, oh, we right up there with the wall. Man, you could I tell me about <laughs> Intel, cable. <laughs> I tell you, that was a light. But I tell you, you to me, it was. Yeah, you go run it. around like I was telling you about exercise, go run around, have matters, go to the school, come back, uh, mm-hmm. clean up my vehicles, and, and it was it was a um, you know never I would have never thought. And let me tell you this, let me tell you the great thing. Even Mitch Mom said, like Rich, we would have never been, we never really liked Richmond as a, a, a selection of being like a, we ever moved. Richmond was never a place that we said, well, we gonna go to Richmond. Or we won't go to that 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 corridor, you know, with Leo. Never, never, because we always said we like the other areas. And I'm sure you right. might have was like that. You probably didn't think about Texas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, right. And so, right, like you said, that was tough for me because I had been a homebody yes. for my whole life. Just three years ago, in um, Powercast Land, that was just three years ago. And I'm 37. That was when I was 34. So 34. I was in Central Virginia corridor, uh, make America great again. Now, I ain't going to say that. But, <laughs> you said it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And I thought that was the world. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I thought everybody was like that. I thought it was just how it was. I, I ain't mm-hmm. never seen nothing like this before in my life. But, you know, let me tell you about the job. Off. But when I was still driving up down the road, we was in, well, the way I got the job to even get the interview was my because of my performance at St. Paul's. So let me, if I can preach to my podcast people, it Go always ahead. is important to you. However, whatever you're doing in life is going to be important. St. Paul's was like a penny, like a, I would say a penny job. But I showed up on time. I worked with like almost 100 kids. Um... You know, I traveled all the way from that lit nationwide company doing that, and I developed relationships. So it's very important to build relationships with people, and you never know who you impact while you are on your career. Like Keisha always taught me this, y'all, for real. You know, you know how she is. She's a very <laughs> and those are connections that she has built over her career too. And so with me, I met up with a guy named Patrick Newby. Patrick Newby at the time was assistant to Byron Cage at um, St. Paul's Church. Patrick Newby knew the guy that was looking for people at Mount Olive to try to interview. Patrick Newby sent, called me, or sent me a text one day, said, are you interested? Um, I know a person, a church is looking for a job. Because I had a good relationship and rapport with Patrick Newby, I was able right. to get in the door to get an interview. And, that, and this is at a church that I ain't never been working at no church with thousand, thousand members. I ain't never been to no uh, big budget church, none of that stuff. I just always been small time, Hills Creek, you know, and I'm still small time, you know, but I'm just saying uh, it, it catapulted me. I think when you, the way you treat people is very important. And I'm learning that because of those, I'm, I'm learning that in my life. The way you treat people, it can affect you in your next life or next, well, not your next life, but your next year or next minute. So um, I just I just say well, that was one thing that was valuable to me because of things, you know, how we walk. 
you know, you talking about me being standoffish or me being so set in my ways. I'm, I'm glad I opened up a little bit because me right. to open up and be able to be able to take leaps of faith has been a, in, 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 in like become friends with a lot of people that, you know, that I was like, man, I've never known that I would have been able to connect and relate to so many people. It's all about building relationships. And because I've been building relationships, um, God has really been blessing. But then on the downside of that, um, when I came in to do the interview, I was like, oh, this is like a, this old plain church. So the Lord was kind of dealing with me. I still think they want me. They want me to be able to read music fluently. They want this. So the devil was already, not the Lord, but the devil was already dealing with me when I went into the interview. I want to tell you how I was nervous. I used to right. a couple of times before I went to the interview. And never, <laughs> never looked at me. He never looked at me. And so, well, when I left there, I, do, I didn't do my perfect. I didn't do John like you said, would you see me in my element? Because I was nervous. I yes. didn't of these people. But when I left there, it was something about their church. And I said, well, Lord, I don't know if they will call me back, but I felt good. It felt like a family environment church. Um, and so, long, fast forwarding it. We went, um, okay. we took the, we got up early one morning. They wanted me to come to get to church. I took off at Hills Creek, went up there. One, we did the eight o'clock and 11 o'clock service, minister. They told me they'll talk, they'll speak. They, they gave me an honor word, said they'll be in touch with me down the road. So I, at that time I thought, okay, it's gonna be a long process. Okay. Um, the pastor had the church administrator call me that next morning. And so when they called me that next morning, I saw the number because I saved it on my phone. I mm -hmm. tell me, you know, thank you for interviewing because, and let me st stop, stop right there. From 2011 till then, I had put in for jobs. And you know, because I tried for jobs in Maryland, I tried for mm -hmm. I tried for jobs in North Carolina, I tried for jobs in um, Chester Peak and all these different places, and they turned me down. I mean, turned me down so like terrible. And, um, <laughs> And so I was like, Lord, I'll just be singing, I won't complain with my daddy. And at that yes. time, I was like, me and daddy, we're going to go, we're going to be like the next Jake's ministry. And so, <laughs> long story short, we, um, you know, when dad, after dad passed, you know, they kind of more opened it up. When dad passed, and, and that's what I'm, another thing I want to say. Sometimes when people leave out of your life or die, that opens up opportunity. So I don't mean I don't mean it in a bad sense. You can turn, but sometimes you know, you know it's a good. And I, I ain't saying I wish I, I wish my dad was still here. And I wish I, I ain't I don't mean like. Right. But because my dad passed and died, you know, moved on and transitioned. Of course, I probably would still be in the nation. If my dad still was here, then I probably been next wife. Don't just like to do work two or three jobs. You know what I'm saying? But. Mm -hmm. 